Until late 2014, we all slept in relative peace. Mario Kart 8 was a Wii U exclusive and would save the system. Breath of the Wild was due to release the following year, can't wait for that. And Shovel Knight proved the Kickstarter could actually be a good thing. However, one day Nintendo decided to change all of that. To this day, there are still three words that can have me waking up in a cold sweat. <laughs> me Sword Fighter Amiibo. Oh my god! The early 2010s saw a boom in the toys life market, with many major publishers taking advantage of the new craze. Essentially, you'd buy a plastic figure with an NFC chip in the space and it would appear in the game with big quotation marks. Skylanders can be credited as catapulting the new obsession for collectors and kids alike back in 2011. They stole Spyro, my precious child, and they created the front runner of the new craze, becoming an annual release for half a decade, my god. Disney decided that they could do better and in 2013 released Disney Infinity and uh, honestly I can kind of see their points. I mean, would you rather play as Mr. Incredible or s s Slam Bam? These two series took off hard and kept going at each other with new releases. However, LEGO Dimensions decided to change this in 2015 with only one game, but having multiple waves releasing for the game's lifespan. What does LEGO have that Activision and Disney don't? How about access to TV franchises like Doctor Who or other video game franchises like Portal and Sonic the Hedgehog? These three games all had a similar theme in common. You'd buy a game which came with a few figures to mess about with, but some content would be blocked off until you bought certain other figures. Essentially, physical DLC. What fun. Now, out of these three, LEGO Dimensions is the only game I actually bought. I thought it was alright, but I wouldn't go crazy over it. The character of Pacific Worlds were kinda neat, but honestly, the best part was having a LEGO TARDIS and LEGO Sonic. I don't really go back to it that much. Now that's all well and good, but none of these games have a KK Slider figure and honestly, what's the point? Nintendo weren't new to the NFC arena and in 2001 they released the e-reader. That's the end of that thought. This never even made it over to Europe and as neat as the concept was, Nintendo would wait until the peak of the NFC craze to announce they were entering the market. Wait, what? Pokemon Rumble U released in 2013 was another Pokemon Rumble game. I feel no one really talks about these games. I mean, I like them. There's a simplicity to them and like you just bottom mash a load of plastic figures. It's just mindless fun to me, but even then, this one's kind of lacking in comparison to other entries. The other entries you run about big worlds and this one's just like small little arenas. Anyway, anyway, uh, the actual physical figures you'd be given randomly in these little gacha ball capsules and it would essentially be up to luck whether you'd get the Mew of your dreams or Litwick. Actually, you know, I, I kind of like Litwick. That's, that's a bit harsh. As much as I do like these little Pokemon figures, the game they work with just isn't enough to sell the game. I have this little Bulbasaur and I love the Bulbasaur figure, but not enough to use it in the game that much. It's not even that special because you just level up the Pokemon in the game and then you can use them later in the game. It's... it's not that interesting. But the real start to Nintendo's arrival into the Toys Life genre would come with... Amiibo. Amiibo! Amiibo were different from the other Toys Life games and their figures because Amiibo wouldn't be specific to one game or series. Rather, they work with multiple Nintendo games. So essentially, if you own a Mario Amiibo, you could do many things with it, like build up Mario Fighter in Smash Brothers, or unlock daily items in Hyrule Warriors, or brace yourselves, a Mario skin for Mario in Super Mario Maker. Wow, I need £10.99 immediately. Nintendo released the figures in waves, with the first wave releasing in November 2014, alongside Super Smash Bros. Wii U, with a total of 12 figures. Some Nintendo icons like Mario, Pikachu, and Donkey Kong were released here, alongside more obscure figures like Wii Fit Trainer and Marth. I feel like these were a great introduction for Amiibo for two reasons. One was that Smash 4 had a great use for Amiibo, like why wouldn't I want to be destroyed by a plastic Mario because I made it too strong. Don't look at me like that. The other reason was collecting these amiibo. See, people really wanted these, like, really badly, and Nintendo, for some reason, can never seem to supply enough of anything, which led to Marf, Wii Fit Trainer, and Villager being almost impossible to find. And as a result, collectors started to go wild for these. And it didn't stop there. 
Throughout the remainder of 2014 and all through 2015, Nintendo would release waves of Amiibo which were mainly Smash Brothers, but they also started introducing new series such as the Mario series, Town of Mario Party 10, Splatoon Amiibo alongside Splatoon, and these adorable plush Amiibo alongside Yoshi's Willy World. I freaking love these. The Pixel Mario figures released alongside Super Mario Maker, Donkey Kong and Bowser had crossover amiibo with Skylanders, the first wave of Animal Crossing amiibo cards released with Happy Home Designer, a Chibi Robo amiibo released alongside, oh no, the Animal Crossing amiibo figures released alongside, oh I see, and the end of the year saw the introduction of Mega Yarn Yoshi. I saw this at my game store for months and never picked it up and I tell this to my therapist every single week and it's my biggest regret I've ever had. 2016 began with the Shovel Knight amiibo and it's pretty neat that an indie developer actually has an amiibo. Then came the release of several more amiibo of existing series such as the Smash More DLC characters, Animal Crossing amiibo cards, more Animal Crossing figures, the Kirby series released alongside Planet Robobot and they're adorable. Some more Splatoon figures came alongside the final Splatfest which may as well have never released because I can never find these. More Mario figures released alongside Mario Party Star Rush and the start of the Zelda series released to end out the year. 2017 was a bit of a slowdown for Amiibo releases. The Poochie Amiibo released alongside Poochie and Yoshi's Woolly World. I need this. Breath of the Wild Zelda Amiibo released alongside Breath of the Wild in not 2015, with more coming later that year. Mario Sports Superstars got Amiibo cards. I forgot this game existed. Alm and... Salisa? Sal is it, is it Celica? Um, Amiibo with Fire Emblem Echoes. And July 20th was a huge Amiibo day, with Splatoon 2 Amiibo releasing to coincide with the game's release, alongside the remaining Smash 4 DLC characters. And Player 2 Amiibo, collectors who have had to take out a second mortgage have Nintendo had done this feature of the Smash line. A Pikmin Amiibo of Hey Pikmin, Metroid Amiibo of Sam's Returns will get to you. Goomba and Koopa Troopa with the top 100s, Krom and Tiki with Fire Emblem Warriors, winning Mario Amiibo alongside Mario Odyssey, the champions from Breath of the Wild came out of nowhere, and Super Mario Serial. I think I've seen this once in person and that's about it. I, I didn't think there'd be a rare serial, but it has an Amiibo chip, so it counts. 2018 was quite slow, Detective Pikachu was massive and released alongside the game, Pearl and Marina amiibo released to mark one year Splatoon 2, Slayer of Astora amiibo with Dark Souls eventually, a uh, Loot Goblin amiibo, alright cool, there, there was nothing really special until the end of the year because Smash Bros released and the Optilings also released alongside the first wave of Smash Ultimate characters. And now leading up to where we are now. We've had four years of Smash Ultimate Amiibo so far in 2019, with the latest wave featuring the Kanto starters, Squirtle, Ivysaur, and Snake, releasing alongside this adorable Link's Awakening Amiibo, which, honestly, from what we know so far, it just leaves the remaining Smash Amiibo and at some stage the remaining Shovel Knight Amiibo. Wow, um, okay, that was a lot, and honestly, I feel like Amiibo have been released quite well over the course of their lifespan. Uh, 2015 is definitely when Amiibo were abundant, but perhaps overly so. Collecting all of those would have taken a toll on collector's wallets, and finding rare amiibo, such as gold and silver Mario, or just those that were understocked, that would have been fairly frustrating. Speaking of rare amiibo, I haven't even touched upon some other series, such as the Munta Hunter Stories amiibo. Information about these aren't overly common, and they're super expensive. I don't know if they were actually released uh, outside of Japan or not. And we have the Box Boy amiibo. Alright, enough history. How about some actual amiibo? First things first, I love some of the latest amiibo. Compared to some of the earlier releases such as Marf, Link or Mario, the new releases have much more detail and much more dynamic expressions, more than likely due to the time they've had to perfect amiibo and what they can do. I love my Link amiibo, but I want to word whoever thought this yellow piece of plastic was a good idea. I'm amazed at some of the quality of these. The Ice Climber amiibo has Nana jumping on a sheet of ice behind them and it's just the exact same pose as the game and that's the same thing with all the Smash amiibo, but with the Ice Climbers I just think it's that much more impressive that they managed to pull it off. And if you want a sign of how far amiibo have come in like their development, you look at like the Inkling Squid amiibo and you look at the one for Splatoon 2 compared to Splatoon 1, there's a big difference there. And you've also got Young Link, he's just so well detailed, even the shield, it looks like it was just cut from a piece of wood. But generally though, I love all the amiibo. 
I still get that same satisfaction from having a new one in my collection. The boxes are all the same like uniform design, it has a character portrait and in front of the top. There's a character trapped in like the see-through plastic window, and on the back is what the character was mainly released for, what their main purpose is. I always kind of found it ironic how as soon as Amiibo released for the Switch, it kind of got rid of the Wii U portion on the back of the box. Now, some collectors like keeping these figures in their boxes, keeping their condition pristine so when the price peaks they can sell them, or maybe you just want to have them all in one neat and tidy place. Me on the other hand... Now, I've only recently gotten into collecting Amiibo, to be honest, and although I did pick up a few back when they first released, they didn't really appeal to me for two major reasons. The first was that I preferred spending my money on actual games, and two, I didn't actually have money to spend on games, never mind Shulk. But speaking of games, these work with them, and there's actually a variety of uses for them. Starting with the title that launched with Amiibo, Smash 4 makes excellent use of your plastic Mario. You can train your figure to fight just like you do, and it's honestly super impressive how much fun they can be. And how much they can beat me up. See, I like this, because if you have an amiibo, you get a cool little extra, you get like a harder fighter that you can train yourself. It's something which if you have it, it's pretty cool. If you don't, you still have access to 90% of the game, 95. I, I feel like Smash Bros. pretty much nailed exactly how I want amiibo to be used. And Mario Party 10, it feels like too much. An entire third of the main game is just blocked off unless you have an amiibo, and the mode you get is a conventional take on Mario Party. Something people wanted for years. Having played this, it's just alright, it's nothing too crazy, it's just like a regular square board, sometimes there's events, it's like very bare bones. But even so, people wanted this, I may have heard to the main game, but you have to have physical DLC. Now, you're probably asking, but surely you'd want a lot of content if you bought this amiibo. And to that I say, yeah I do, but I also don't think it's fair on those who don't own an amiibo to lock out so much content. It should be something small but kind of meaningful. Like, you're buying this plastic figure, have some form of that plastic figure in the game. Like, in Mario Kart 8, you get certain amiibo having certain costumes. And, like, the Pikmin one has a little Pikmin, like, cling onto your helmet, that's just kinda cute. The Pac-Man one has a little moving Pac-Man on your helmet. It's, it's really neat, just don't look at the Pac-Man, it's just a distraction. Mario Maker and Yoshi's Willy World, I feel, did this really well, however. Both of these games allowed you to scan pretty much any amiibo that was released at the time, and you unlocked these cute outfits. In Mario Maker, there were these sprites of all the characters, and I just think these are super neat. I can't wait to see what they'll include in Mario Maker 2, oh. Yoshi's Willy World had these adorable designs for all the amiibo, and this was definitely a huge undertaking considering how many designs there are, but this is definitely the cutest Shulk has ever been. Splatoon also has pretty neat uses for amiibo, essentially they have these extra levels for the story mode levels, but they have a twist on them, so like you have to play as a squid or you have to play with a certain weapon, it's pretty cool. But the best part, by far, is on the gamepad. Yeah, you got these cute little mini games played on a loading screen. I, I I think that's really cool. You just play these mini games while you're waiting for a match to load. I wish Splatoon 2 had something like this actually, but there were also a few select free amiibo games. Essentially, if you had an amiibo, it would allow you to access parts of the overall game. First up is Amiibo Tap, Nintendo's greatest hits. It's just demos that you unlock with amiibo. However, Many Mario and Friends Amiibo Challenge is actually pretty neat. It's based off Mario vs Donkey Kong, but the character you play as is based on whatever amiibo you use. And if it's not a character in the game, you get a block. But you can still play all the main levels. If you have one with the Mario characters, you gain access to special areas and special moves. And honestly, this is really in-depth for like a free title which you unlock with plastic figures. And finally, for the free titles, we have Animal Crossing Amiibo Fat Boy. This is a full price game, let's back up a bit. So, I remember hearing this was a free game at one point, where you just have to have Amiibo to play the game, and yeah, that makes sense to me. Um, but I'm guessing they decided to package it as a full price game, and now everyone hates it. Amiibo Festival is essentially if you took the Mario parties and removed the minigames. You essentially use your Amiibo to roll the dice around the board, and yeah, it's just like a board game. That's kinda it. 
But due to my cousins loving this game, I've played this more than I think anyone else in the entire world and I've kind of got a soft spot for it. It's not actually the worst game I've played and I do kind of find it fun to go around the board. The problem is, I definitely don't think this is worth being a full price game. I personally bought this for £8, which means that just the amiibo, I got my money's worth. But I, honestly, the game doesn't really hold that value. I think if it was half the price that it was, and the game was included, you know, as free, just like two amiibo plus the game completely free or something, something like that. Like the Wii Play strategy where you just charge like £10 more than you would for two amiibo and you get like an extra game on the side. It's not the best game, but you got amiibo. Something like that. Moving to the 3DS, Amiibo only natively work with the new line of 3DS. For any previous models, you'd have to purchase the separate NFC reader, which came bundled with Animal Crossing Happy Home Designer. If you scanned an Animal Crossing Amiibo in this game, you could design their house and... I, I promise, like, although that's really all I can say about it, it is more exciting than just saying you can design their house as made out to be. And following an update, you can also use these Animal Crossing figures to invite them to your campsite in Animal Crossing New Leaf. It's fun! The Fire Emblem games actually have amazing support for Amiibo. Um, in Fire Emblem Fates, you could allow characters to appear in your castle and then later recruit them. Um, in Echoes, Alm and Celica allow you to access special dungeons, which is pretty neat from what I've heard. I don't actually have the game myself at the moment. And Codename Steam lets the Fire Emblem characters fight in your team but no one bought that game. Detective Pikachu allows the related amiibo to unlock some helpful tips, which is all right, but the main point of this amiibo is how massive it is. Look at this unit. Many other 3DS titles use amiibo mainly for items or a small feature, like uh, the Kirby games give you a power up or something. But the final 3DS game I want to mention is Metroid Samus Returns. Tapping Samus, Samus, Zero Suit Samus, or Metroid will allow you to access some extras in-game, which is nice, but they also unlock art galleries, sound tests, and an exclusive fusion mode, which is like a harder hard mode. I don't really like this. It makes me feel like DLC instead of small extras, and on top of that, it feels like things that should have been in the game from the start. Like, additional music or art I can deal with, but to lock, like, the actual ways to play these art or view these- play these art. <laughs> but to lock the actual meanings of viewing this art or listening to this music behind a paywall, it just feels so unnecessary, and it's unlocked behind the specific amiibo. Fusion modes, I can kind of deal with, considering you have a hard mode, but... And finally, we go to Nintendo Switch games, and it's rather lacking in comparison, to be honest. A Little Nightmares allows you to unlock a Pac-Man costume, I love it. Super Mario Odyssey unlocks certain costumes early, with Mario, Bowser and Peach offering helpful hints. Smash Bros Ultimate offers even stronger amiibo than Smash 4, please send help. And it even allows you to train them online, which is pretty neat. Splatoon 2 offers a photo mode, gear, a new song for each amiibo. Fire Emblem 3 Houses allows for Fire Emblem amiibo to unlock a new song linked to the character in the Amiibo Gazebo. And honestly, whoever came up with that, I want to meet you and shake your hand. The Link's Awakening amiibo allows you to have Dark Link chase you in the little dungeons you can make. It's kind of cute, but it's definitely not necessary. And otherwise, not too much of no aside from gear and things. Even with Breath of the Wilds, it's mainly just gear and... Yeah, that's a major reason to use even the Zelda series of amiibo in Breath of the Wild is just gear. But there has been one standout use for Amiibo for me personally, and that's with the Wolf Link Amiibo. This Amiibo released alongside Twilight Princess HD, and in that game, it gives you an exclusive dungeon to go through the Cave of Shadows. It's a boss rush, essentially. You fight different enemies in each floor, and it's similar to the Cave of Ordeals in the base game, but this time you're Wolf Link. Um, so after you beat this dungeon, you can scan your Wolf Link Amiibo, and it saves the hearts you have for the next time. However, in Breath of the Wild, if you have the Wolf Link Amiibo with saved data from Twilight Princess, you can transfer that over to Breath of the Wild, and in Breath of the Wild, it will have the same number of hearts. Meaning, if you went through the Cave of Shadows in Twilight Princess HD, you get a bonus perk in Breath of the Wild. This is a really neat touch, this is a completely different side thing between two different games. 
and honestly it's probably the best use we've had for amiibo so far. I love this and if we get something like this at any stage in the future it'll be amazing. And that is just about everything I wanted to say about amiibo. Overall, I like these little things. Mainly the use in games is small, but the fact that you can use them in multiple games adds a lot of charm to them, and it makes getting your favourite characters in physical form that much better. Especially since some of these franchises are so niche that if they didn't have amiibo, they probably wouldn't be represented at all. That being said, not every amiibo has equal value. I can't really think of one game outside of Smash where you could use the Cloud Amiibo, yet I'm pretty sure there are more games that Mario Amiibo is compatible with than the amount of Kit Kats in the world. Even so, collecting these figures has been a bunch of fun. Even though I'm not entirely sure how much longer they'll be around, Nintendo seems to be slowly releasing less of these guys. I, I hope it's not the end of them quite yet. I love having these on my shelf, and the additional bit of content in my games has been super fun over the past few years. Yeah, I I really like these. Overall, I like Amiibo. I mean, they're neat little figures with my favourite Nintendo characters. And sure, I could have spent the money I used on these on fuel or food, transport, a better camera, better computer, other games, game console, seeing my friends, going on holiday. So I, I need to Hospital bills. Look, I need the Pac-Man costume, not nightmares, okay? Hey, I just want to do a little outro bit to say thanks so much for watching. This took a lot longer to edit than I thought. Um, to give you an indication, this audio was first scripted in like September, and then I re-recorded it in like November, and I just, there's been so much happening and it just conflicts and I'm like, ah. But I'm hoping come the new year it will be a lot easier to get things like on the go and like edit stuff and like get them out so there's more stuff for you guys to watch. And I guess um, ha ha happy holidays and Merry Christmas and have a good, have a good new, new 20, new decade. <laughs>